All right, welcome to the Let It Fly show. I am Michael Severe, joined by Central High and Creighton grad Josh Jones, live inside of the Let It Fly sports bar in the beautiful Capital District. Yep. What's up? Uh, state basketball. State basketball uh, is going on. What else is going on? Uh, NCAA tournament coming around the corner. Oh, there's so many yeah. small conferences. It's winning time. Playing these games right now. <laughs> and as Mac knows... Way too many betting opportunities <laughs> right now. You can't keep up. There's like 16 conferences, yeah, and you're sure. like the the SoCal and the yeah. and the Northwest Pacific Conference. I mean, it's crazy, man. Right, it's absolutely right, crazy. Right. Uh, if you want to um, help us out, you can always like and subscribe to our Facebook page. Uh, you can also go on our. Instagram, you can go on our Twitter, and more important, YouTube is where you can find yeah. all the videos as well, and also the Let It Fly Show page. It's got a bunch of information there. We really appreciate you liking and subscribe, subscribing that. Brought to you by our presenting sponsor, Bud Light. Bud Light. I bet you there's people out there right now drinking Bud Light. I guarantee I'm it. I'm pretty sure. Yep. Just like if you're hanging out here at the Let It Fly Show or you're in the Let It Fly Sports Bar at home yep. in your basement, is a great time. Brings you easy drinking and easy buckets throughout Nebraska. Easy to drink and easy to enjoy. We appreciate Bud Light for being our sponsor. Now, we normally do the food here. Right. We're waiting. Okay. Because our guest this week is Kirsten Bernthal Booth. Right. Head volleyball coach at Creighton. Okay. Every weekend when they go on the road, if they win both games, the young ladies pick a place to go and they go get ice cream. What a treat. That's the reward, right? What a treat. What a treat. It's a pretty good reward. Yeah. <laughs> um, you you burn all those calories. Today. Did you have ice cream today? Uh, vanilla bean and uh, cookies and cream. Vanilla bean together is like, for me, Lay's potato chips. They're all. It's always good. Do you like? It's never bad. Do you like pota uh, Lay's potato chips with ice cream? I've never had it. Man, my dad used to do it. Dude. I've done the French fry thing. Yeah, a little bit of salt and sweet. My that dad was ahead of his time. My dad was <laughs> putting stuff on ice cream yeah. before people was putting Put stuff, stuff on, on ice cream. cream. Yeah, yeah. One of the best yeah. ice creams we have at the house right now has. Um, Chocolate covered pretzels yeah. inside the ice cream, like broken I, up. Yeah, my, that's actually pretty good. My uh, freezer is vanilla bean, yeah, butter pecan, cookies and cream. Uh, it's a few more. We but, got a mud tracks, whatever that is. That. We got that one yeah. that's got the crumbled up. I'm not really a pretzels. chocolate fan, though. Me neither. I'm more so. My favorite yeah. flavor by far is the the white mint. I feel you. Ice cream. Yeah. You know, it's it's got the, the little bit of green in it. Yep. You never can find that. Best ice I cream love that place ice cream. In, in Omaha. Okay, so I'd, I'd have to go. So first, depends on what you want. Okay. Right? What you want. If you want a thick, creamy, full of life, uh -huh. Ted and Wally's. Down here or out okay. in Benson. All right. If you're looking for like a bunch of variety of really good flavors yeah. and can be pretty healthy as well. Yep. You probably want to go to the one in Blackstone. Okay. The one in Blackstone has got all love, these. Love cone? Cone, cone flour, flour. Co thank you. I said love cone. Cone, cone you, you probably flour. love it. Cone yeah, flour cone is really flour. good. And then the, if you're looking for a mixture, E Creamery. That's my favorite. Off of 50th and uh, cone Underwood. Cone flour and E Creamery is Yeah, a they're tie. really good. The See, reason why it's a tie is because the, the vibes of the area. Ice cream hit, is, hit it is, different. But it is. Yeah. Depending on where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. That's, how, that's how 10 Wally's is downtown. Yeah, no doubt. Because there's be always deep. a line. That'd be deep, yeah. And they, I remember the first time I went there, <clears throat> my wife's like, uh, they got some weird flavors. Yeah. I was like, okay, whatever. Right. And they had a... Um, sweet corn, and I was like, "Okay, I gotta try, I gotta try that." That sounds, <laughs> and it was so good. Really, they have like artich. They have all these flavors, man, yeah. that I would never try, but they do a great job. For so sure. they have like three thousand flavors. Yeah. Um, but we will have an ice cream sundae for her. Yeah. When we're doing the interview, all right. so we're gonna bring it out during the oh, middle of the interview. Hopefully, she eat it. She'll have some. Oh, I'm okay. pretty sure. This it's, a, too, it's cliche. She might, but man, I'm good on ice cream season over. She knows ice cream sundae. <laughs> You can get chocolate or vanilla here at the bar with chocolate syrup, whipped cream, and a cherry on top. Ten bucks. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a couple of them during the interview. So, All Also, right. things going on. Tonight, we tape on a Thursday. I always remind people. It's a great night to come here because they have the steak and fry special. Yeah. So I love that it's steak. Well done. Not, not well done in terms of how it's cooked. It's but it's done well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, they do a very good job. Yeah. Season up the steak. You get a bunch of fries. Um, it is a great thing. It's a special on Thursday nights. 20 bucks steak yep. and fry special. Friday night, there's a big event happening over there. That's Brett the Young. House? Yeah. Brett Young pre and post party. All right. They're having that here. That's Friday night. And then Saturday's loaded with basketball. Mm -hmm. Creighton against Villanova That's at 130. That's going to be fun. Did you see that stat that... Um, I think it was, it was Rob. Rob put it out. Rob Matthew Marinas. He, yeah, he retweeted it. Yeah. So the last three times Villanova ended the season at home, mm -hmm. the team that won the game won the conference. No, no, no. 
won the whole tournament. Well, that's what I mean. Won, again, I mean won, won the tournament. Yeah, won the whole NCAA yeah. tournament. Villanova twice, UConn last year. Well, that's our turn. There you go. It's Creighton's turn. It's Creighton's turn. <laughs> you also have the uh, the women's tournament going on. Creighton will be playing in that. And then the Omaha Super Novas versus the Valkyries. Yeah. You have that as well. Valkyries. The Valkyries. I think of uh, Thor. Uh, there you Ragnarok. go. Ragnarok. Hey, yeah. that's my, that's Tessa the, Thompson hey. is just... That's I mean, a, that's a it ain't wonderful even about, young I don't think it's a we can argue, but I think it's Ragnarok is hands down the best Marvel Avengers movie created. Well, it's not. A, hold I on. Okay, so. hold on. So it's not an Avengers movie. Yeah. It's a Thor movie. Well, yeah, but it's it, by but, far the best Thor movie. Well, it's not even close, no, right? No, he's an Avenger. Yeah, he is. But I mean, so with Avengers? No, it's a, no I mean, I meant to say it like, because uh, I don't want to disrespect the people who who are. It is a hot take. Okay. But it is like, it's the best Thor movie. I meant to No say. doubt. No it's doubt whatsoever. Yeah. The first one is Infinity War average is, is the better, two. Is the better uh, Avengers movie. So you got, yeah. I, I love in, in game. The la, you know, the yeah. last one of the 20 is great. Yeah. Um, I think all of the Guardians and Galaxies are great. Like even the last Guardians of the I, Galaxy hey, was a great movie. I don't movie. know why I can't get with that. I love Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. I'm a big fan of those. Uh, you know what makes me laugh the most out of all of them? What's that? Ant-Man. Because oh, Michael right. Pena cracks me up yeah okay. that dude's hilarious yeah for um, sure. but that's that's some of my favorites but i'm, I'm with you <laughs> ragnarok's a great movie i love and, it and tessa thompson again yeah, is just an sure. amazing actress uh let's let's hit the headlines oh, also sunday nebraska plays michigan 11 a.m yep. come out here yep. get some brunch watch the game have a good time yep uh headlines number one before we get to our guest boy state basketball uh we are taping on a thursday yep. wednesday you had the first round of state um, some good games. The funniest game out of all of them, though. The first number one. one seed, Bellevue West, against the eight seed Creighton Prep. Man. It's 35-31 going into the fourth quarter. <coughs> With two minutes and 50 seconds left, it's 35-31. No one scored. Then Bellevue West hits three shots Dang. to win the game. Only three buckets uh, scored the whole fourth quarter. I don't want to be the guy to say, this one high school basketball coming to right now. <laughs> It was the only game like that, though. Yeah. Because North and Central had a really good game. That was a fun yeah. game. I feel like if anybody in Class A is scoring, Class A is scoring thirty points in a game. Yeah. Then like that's not good. Nah, man. Forty-one thirty-five was that final, by the way. Man. Central won. Would they oh, play zone the whole time or what? They just couldn't hit shots. Dang. They just couldn't hit shots. No fouls was called either. As as our guest who's coming up would say, uh -huh. they were out of system a lot. All right. They were not in system much <laughs> at all. Uh, you also had Miller North, of course, knock off Gretna. That's yeah. I was cheering so hard for Gretna. Hold on, well, let me say not, this. Not against Wait, Miller North. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. two things, two okay, things yeah. to what you say. Yeah. All right, so first, uh, before I forget, mm -hmm. uh, shout out Isaiah McMorris. Oh, yeah. That dude. Got the steal and got the delay in, yeah. He's going to be a legend. Yeah. He, he keep winning state and all that. And oh, all yeah, he got a chance sports. to win four in a row. So I, I'll put some respect on Bellevue West. Yeah, yeah. I, I think. They, if they beat Central, mm -hmm. if they beat the Eagles, they're going to win it all. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Uh, you said Gretna lost. Yeah. All right, now, this, is, now, this is what I'm about to say okay. why they all lost. Right. All right. I was at the North Central game, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, we can talk about Dale Ron, talk yep. about uh, Minor Strong, all that. Did you know that Gretna went into the locker room with 30 seconds left in the North and Central game? You were not prepared to play. Oh. So I, I literally seen a group of uh, student athletes get up, and I looked to my left. I said, that, that who played next? Yeah. Oh, they, they lost. Oh. They lost. I mean, like, I don't know if they thought they had it in the bag or what. Well, I don't. I, don't, I mean, it's been such like, a hard it's, season it's, it's, for it's, them. Is it new rules? Or, no. With their, or, or does the next team come out after the uh, last normally game? Normally what happens is watching the, when the boys and girls play at the same time, that's what happens normally. They go in. They sit out there for the, almost the whole game, then they go back in the locker room. No, no, And they no, come no. back out with 15 minutes about of practice. Half, about half. They wasn't dressed. They was like. Oh, they back, weren't even. No, oh, I don't know what happened. None of that. I don't know what happened. They were not dressed. They weren't dressed? No. Okay, I don't know. The team was just coming down listen, like listen, they just got they there. Lost, they lost their head coach earlier this year, passed away from cancer. Yeah. Um, oh, that's right. Horrible, horrible story. Coach Feig is an awesome guy. Um, and so I was cheering for him to win. Yeah. Um, but they, they so, lost yeah. to Miller North. No disrespect. So you think, by the way, you crazy. think Miller North is going to beat – you think – who ahead. wins out of Westside Miller North? I think Miller North wins that game. And Bellevue West Central? I think um, – I'm not even being biased. Uh, you pick Central? I think uh, I think Central can upset them. I went to the first game. They yeah. were up eight. Were, yeah. Central was up eight with right. six minutes left. Yeah. And I'm not saying they were bad calls. Right. But I got yelled at by an official for stuff I put on Twitter. I apologized. <laughs> um, it was, yeah. I thought there were some questionable calls. And 
Bellevue West came back, hit a couple late shots, won the game. Yeah. They can beat them. You Central know, can beat them. that, no, they can beat them is Central the right can beat phrase. Them. Central can beat them. I'm not saying that, they, I'm, I mean, there's a little bias, obviously, with us being Eagles. Yeah. But, um, like, if Dale Ron Thomas plays lights mm-hmm. out. Yeah. And, because that game against North, the supporting cast didn't do nothing. Like, to me. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, Prince was doing great rebounding, but he didn't hit a shot. Mm-hmm. Like, if they, if he can play lights out and they can, like, you know, just at least give them 10 points. Yeah, yeah. I think they got a chance. I hope so. My son, you know, plays in the pet band. Bellevue West is He's down there though. for it. He's having a good time playing the baritone. That's Real quick up. before we get to our guest, uh-huh. um, Bill Sharman yeah. on the finalist list for the Julius Irving Award. This is crazy. As the best small forward. In I think the that's, country. I, that was my favorite player growing up. Yeah. You know, I love Doc, but yeah. I'm a Sixer you fan. You know what I found out? That's a huge for him. He averaged 26 and 20. What year? Rebounds. College. Oh, yeah, at Massachusetts, I, I at UMass. That. Yeah, at I, UMass. 20? Yeah. 20 rebounds? And then when he went to the ABA. 20 rebounds? He was averaging 31 points a game. 26 and 20, Yeah, wow. he, he was by, it was, it was yeah. UMass. It was a lot of schools, right. regular schools. But, but he, was, yeah. he was great. But yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. He was incredible. About Baylor, I think, yeah. um, I think if he don't win it, buddy from ten, Tennessee to win it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Baylor has been playing yeah. consistent all year. And he has gotten better. Remember when he first came on and talked to us about what he's trying to work on and get better at? Mm. I think that he's... Look at his body, dude. Yeah, man. He got himself in great shape. Yeah. He did those things. Yeah. Like, he got sleep like he's supposed to. That's what Coach <laughs> about. And he got in better shape. Right. And he dedicated himself for, for that sure. last year. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. so congratulations. Hope, hope he wins that. That'd yeah. be awesome. And the last one... Um, Creighton finishes with Villanova. We mentioned that stat. Whoever, yeah. you know, national those champion. Games. Could be a national champion, of course. So who were the teams? Okay, UConn. It was two Vanillas. Ba- Vanillas. I'm thinking about ice cream. ice cream. It was two, <laughs> two Villanovas back-to-back. Right. And then UConn last year. So it was 14, 16, so and 23. Six, so 14, Villanova. Uh, won the championship. And then 16. 16 they won it. And, and then, then last year with UConn. Okay. So now, it's the last time Vin- Villanova has played at home. To end the season, the team that won the game has won the national championship. That's it. There you go. It's our turn. Yeah. It's our turn. <laughs> and then, by the way, if, if Nebraska beats Michigan on Sunday, they will. That'll be 22 wins. They It'll be the most they've had since 2017, 2018. Now, I hate to say it, it's going to be tough to win now. It's always, it's always <laughs> tough to win on the road in the Big Ten. <laughs> yeah. When we come back, we will talk to our guest. She is the head volleyball coach for Creighton University, yeah. Kirsten Bernthal Booth. Next, when we come back here on Let It Fly Show. I want a Sunday. All right, welcome back. We are joined by our guest this week. She is the head volleyball coach at Creighton University, Kirsten Bernthal Booth, joining us on Let It Fly Show. Thank you very much for joining us. Excited to be here. I am very excited you are here, mainly because I want to talk about your daughter and <laughs> and the clutch free throws she made the great rebound off the block shot that's that's what you teach right fundamentals do well, the right I, things i have to say i was talking to rob anderson today and he's yeah. like they're not going to ask you about volleyball they're going to want to talk about <laughs> reese so yeah yeah uh, it was kind of a surreal storybook ending I to bet. her high school career and yeah uh it is much tougher to be a parent in the stands than oh, it yeah. is to be a player first of all for and then, sure uh, i can coach. respect I, that players the easiest coach is the second yeah. and then parent Oof. Do you find That's yourself uh, yelling at the refs and you have to recognize who you are and represent? No. <laughs> I, I am not. I sit on my hands. I'm pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I yell at my children probably. The yeah. Most yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. I don't yell at the refs. I tweet about them. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. this is, we, we had a conversation a couple of weeks ago about Brett Prince and where she fits. Um, Stu Pospisil, who obviously is the historian of high school basketball in no, the state, tough. said she's the best high school basketball player he's ever he seen. He said Do that. You know, said she's ever seen. Um, That's a hot take. Talk to me about being watching a winner like that because oh she is an ultimate winner, and I know you've seen a lot in your career, but mm-hmm. kind of tell us a little bit about what you've seen from her. Yeah, I actually was talking to someone about this exactly today because we were talking about who's the next Caitlin Clark, and mm. I said, I said you've got to watch this kid play, and yeah. I don't claim to be a basketball aficionado by any yeah. stretch, but I can recognize winners, mm-hmm. and that kid shows up every single night um, she's not selfish, and so she'd get these extraordinary numbers mm-hmm. uh, from a you know a scoring standpoint. But she also led her team in assists yep. and rebounds. So she's not a selfish kid, which I think can take kids back, right? right. Um, but that's the you know you kind of hit on exactly what I think is most impressive, Michael, is that uh, 
she's she steps up at, at big moments. Mm-hmm. I mean, her mom would say, her mom was the coach, as you mm-hmm. guys know, would say, Brit! And that was kind of the, like, hey, it's close. Take over this game, yeah. right, child. Right, yeah. And that might be her taking over and scoring, or that might be a great assist, but right. she did it over and over again. Yeah. And mm-hmm. she's really mm-hmm. a great kid. I, yeah. I think that's the thing that I love as a coach and as a mom and as a human, that she's an incredible player, she's a fierce competitor, but she's a good human. Yeah, yeah. Man, like... I said it was a hot take just because I think about history of people like Marty's Ivy yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. If Stu says it, I I got to I mean, buy into all. it. You know, he, he's seen them all. Yeah, but like kind of like uh, Caitlin Clark. To your point, I feel like players like that. The way that they impact the game is they make the defense have to stop them, and they react according to whatever the defense gives them. And sometimes it can come across like, oh, man, they're selfish. They shoot a lot or, or whatever. But if you really think about it, it's like the defense is not stopping the player from doing what they're doing. And then when they try to adjust, they make the teammates around them better. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, and they win. So, no, I respect that. I just always hope that talent like that, when they go to the next level, wherever they go, they have to go somewhere where they can continue to be that. Yeah. I feel like anything under that, you're doing you're doing a disservice to a type of player like that. So, yeah, yeah it'll be fun. Uh, you know, I think I talked to her mom afterwards, and she said, "A, I'm I'm thankful she didn't get injured because Amen. everyone yeah. was all over her." Mm-hmm. Right. B, you know, I think they're excited to see what she looks like with a defender. I right? know, As right. real defender, right one. Yeah. yeah. But my my daughter would always say, "You know, mom." Brit's better with two defenders than I am with no defenders. Man, so I'm going to get the ball that's to a compliment. as much as I, possible. Makes a lot of yeah. sense. <laughs> Did you ever have a chance with as busy as you are to coach any of your kids at anything? Yeah, yeah. No, okay. I coached them volleyball. Uh, for volleyball. Sure. Yeah. I think I did uh, a, a four-year-old softball one I year. I respect that. Some okay. soccer. Right, you know, right, when yeah. you're just trying to – I remember the first time we were doing softball, Eric and I, my husband and I were doing mm-hmm. it together. We had all these plans, right? You know, sure. Plan. Who's more competitive in coaching? Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to hear you say it. But it's four-year-olds, <laughs> yeah, right? right? Sure. So we come yeah. with the practice plan, and what we learned was four-year-olds need to be taught how to stand across from each other. There yes. was no teaching of, no. The, of T-ball right. going on. Yep. We were uh, <laughs> just trying to get them to sit in one location. As yeah, well. that's do, do not play in the grass. <laughs> yeah. That's right. the number one thing first. Yeah. Don't play in the hey, grass. Hey, hey, yeah. eyes here. Over here, yeah, exactly. <laughs> sit down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. That's awesome. That's awesome. What about, let me say this to you first. So from the time when I was a student athlete at Creighton to now. I think that um, I've never actually got to give you your flowers just because I feel like I've, when I had free time, I was one of those players who went to all the other games, just hanging out and things like that. And your continued success. And also, I feel like you were mystique to me because you didn't really say much until you start coaching. To talk to you now, I'm honored. And I just really think that um, somewhere, sometime, some point, they got to put you in the rafters at Creighton oh, University. Well, that's not true, but thank you. <laughs> I think so. And You're definitely I, going I, in the rafters. I, I think so. You might per- have a building personally. Right you never know. Personally, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think so. Yeah. That means a lot coming from someone that I have great respect for. So yeah, thank, thank you. So thank you. So tell me where you guys are in terms of the season, because with the way recruiting is and the way workouts are, there's almost no off time. Right. Um, certainly for the players. What What are you guys doing right now in terms of coaching staff? Well, they're on spring break, so they, oh, that's they, nice. Oh, so there's time off. Yeah. They do get that off. Do not go have too much fun. Yeah. No, I was. I gave them a big speech on don't be. Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Not be stupid. Oh, I heard that yeah. speech. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's true. Yeah, Ed yeah. Coach Matt. Yeah. 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 Um, we so effectively we're in the spring season, which we were just we just finished our eight hour segment. Okay. So they could get we would do four hours on the court, small group stuff. It's actually one of my favorite times because it's a lot of training. It's small mm. groups, so you get to get to know especially the younger players better. And then four hours strength and conditioning. We the week before last week we started our twenty hour segment. So effectively we're in season, mm. but we can't miss any class. You can play four dates, so we'll play four weekend dates. Um, I've we've got our biggest spring squad that we've ever had. We've got sixteen. Wow, like last wow. year we were at nine to yeah. give you an idea of yeah. how big of a difference. Why that would is. why the increase? We had we had two grad we had two transfers come in and we had two high school kids like uh, okay come freshmen, early mm. which we've never never had I've had one in twenty years um, and they wanted to come yeah. which is great I mean it's yeah. a win for it's us win, yeah for sure I don't ever push it on yeah kids to rush them to come to campus exactly I, I I mean I didn't want my kids go to prom. Yeah. high school right yeah. exactly no, but right, these yeah. guys initiated it and mm. um, and it's been awesome because I mean to get that one on one training mm. now because the fall is all about the team right. this is about I always say the spring's about you as an individual. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The falls about the team. Mm-hmm. Okay. What about, um, I think about volleyball. No, I don't think personally, maybe it's no different than 
football and basketball, but when do you know somebody's going to be special? You know, you think about places like Nebraska Elite. Um, I talked to a guy like Tony Carroll, who's very passionate about volleyball. I've been to a lot of his tournaments and things. Like, when would you say you know someone has potential to play at the high Division One level at a place like Creighton? Well, it's interesting. Sometimes you can tell when they're young. So my, so Reese, my mm-hmm. senior, uh, was on a team when she was 12. And uh, Grace Heaney, who's a freshman at mm-hmm. Purdue, got some good playing time this year. I could, it could mm-hmm. I told you at 12, this kid's special. Oh, wow. She was tall and she could jump. Oh. And in our game, height is such height. an indicator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the other things, you know, you can tell athleticism, quick twitch, but that doesn't always, you know, like the libero position. Right. Mm-hmm. You can have kids that are... Uh, I, they have to be good athletes, but not necessarily quick twitch to be great liberos. If they have great balance, sometimes the twitchy kids are, have too much movement. Right. Mm. And so, you know, that's, to me, the hardest position to evaluate. Right. Setters, you know, you're looking at leadership. I mean, that, that, that's the one that's really got to have the head, yeah. so you got to watch them a little bit longer. But mm. I think the hitters, sometimes you can identify younger. And, I mean... I don't know if this is appropriate to say, but you would look at their body type. You know, sure. you can no, tell. No, no, I know what you you mean. can tell by, by the well, way, you know, if they're twelve, if they've developed already, right. or whether you're like. I mean, a lot of times we're like gonna grow. You know, yeah, so you're gonna man. See, yeah. You know, our front row. You know, if you're middle nowadays in a top fifteen program, you're you, probably gonna be six three. Six, I'm about to say six three. You gotta yeah, be there. Yeah. So, yeah. so you're looking for those kids. Yeah. Would yeah. you say um, volleyball in that position has evolved? Like in the last 10 years, has it always been 6'3", where it's the time where it was 6'1"? I mean, yeah, what's going Is this an evolution? I know, it's thing? crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It is taller. It is. Yes, yeah. even during yeah. my tenure. Yeah. So like Angie, my longtime assistant, associate head coach, uh, she was a national champion at Nebraska. Mm-hmm. She's six foot, mm-hmm. and everyone was kind of that size. So even in this 20-year this period, Man. I mean, yeah, you – uh, yeah, it's that's crazy. what makes me excited about my four year old. Yeah, I always talk about my <laughs> son to him. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, I was six two and I was like considered tall for a backcourt guard, yep. you know. But now six three is like, well, Bryce that, Williams, the two guard for Nebraska, six seven. I seen him yesterday yeah, at he's the state six, tournament. Seven. Yeah, and I'm yeah. no disrespect. Yeah. I sized him up and was like. Thank you about Baylor Shireman. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's different now. Kirsten Berthold Booth joining us here on Let It Fly Show. Maybe get over it isn't the right words for it, but how long did it take you to get over the Louisville loss? Yeah. In the Sweet 16. It, you know, it's always kind of a depression after season. No doubt. Um, yeah. So I always say it takes me through the, the national, once the national championship is oh, okay. over for, right. so a week mm-hmm. is, so if I, if we lose the first weekend, it's like a two week, because it's still yeah. going on, sure. you're living it, everyone's we talking should be about playing. it. Do you watch the final four? When you lose, I do you. because our coaches convention yes. is, but I don't right. go and watch our match immediately after. Respect, like, yeah, okay. Oh, really? I, I got it's it's too. You gotta decompress for yeah, yeah. That's so, good to hear, though. Like, I don't know if it's good or not. No, I mean, <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, think about this. You can handle it. It's like, and I mean, I guess it's a segue question. We're in the same state, you know. When I say we're, I'm talking about Creighton. It's in the same state as Nebraska. You know, Nebraska is one of the top five teams, top three. Yep. teams in the country and it's like you gotta wonder like what's a in, what's a motivation of a coach who knows that they have the the talent to get to that level um like is it to win a national championship or is it just to win the, the conference tournament like I always wonder like does it is it a burning desire uh, to win a national championship or do you feel like man we had a great season we went as far as we could you know like because I remember when we were in the Missouri Valley uh playing basketball making it to the third round game meant like man you did the extra yeah I don't think I think Creighton is actually good enough to get to that title game yeah so that's why it's healthy for me to hear that you can't even watch it when you lose yeah that's good to know yeah, it's been a process. You know, when I took the job in 03, yep. you know, they were 3 and 23, and my ultimate goal, and this is funny because in my contract, there was a bonus for the NCAA tournament. Come on, so we got to make I, it. I wrote, I mean, like, it was yep. like, I'm going to make the NCAA. Like, yep. So my pinnacle yeah. was to make the NCAA tournament. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, your your goals evolve. Yeah. Um, but absolutely, Josh, you know, I think, now I think there's going to be new challenges with the P4 stuff and yeah, all of that. So yeah. I, I recognize that our, our challenges may be tougher <laughs> down the road, mm-hmm. but right now, do I, am I happy with the fact that we played a really good match against a really good Louisville yeah. team in the Sweet 16? No, I wanted to win that match right. because I thought we had an opportunity to win the match after that. Yep. So, 
Um, That'd be the one. It's like, it's not really the team you playing. You know you can get that next one if you get mm-hmm. past this. Yeah. 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 Ah, I'll tell you, you yeah. guys played a lot better. I always think back to that game you guys lost against Texas a few years ago, and they physically kind of seemed like they overwhelmed. Yeah. That wasn't the case with Louisville. You guys were right there. Yeah, we were right there and, and had our opportunities. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting because what I took away from that fifth game was – almost a mental switch of like they had a player on their team that she just said, I'm not losing. Right. And so that's been our mantra this spring of like, yeah. you know, create So we're doing a bunch of drills where you get one shot. Like you have to win at this point. Like gotcha. you've got to go for it. And so, you know, if, if, if we're playing, and then we talk, actually talk about Texas, if we're playing Texas and we're at 24, 23 and we're serving that ball comes back to us, we have one shot. Yeah, like, right. You're not going to play ping pong back and forth. Right. You have to put the ball yeah, for, down. For sure. So, yeah, yeah. so we're trying to create that scenario of like, you know, it's, we're not just happy winning the point. We got to win it on the first opportunity that we can. Yeah. Right. This game has evolved so much. The, the player movement, almost like free agency in a way. How do you I'm make you the czar of college Ooh, volleyball? So um, how, <laughs> how do you handle the people reaching out to student athletes? How do, how do you balance you know, the one year being able to go one-time transfer with actually a lot of student-athletes are now transferring twice, maybe even three times sometimes. Right. How do, you, how do you fix all this? Oh, I don't know if fix is really, you know, a word I can use right now, For, to be yeah. honest. I, I don't have a, uh, you know, I don't have issues with the transfer portal. And part of it, in volleyball, we never had to sit out. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the, right, the portal true. didn't change that much for us. Uh, now, right. I do think it normalized transferring a mm-hmm. lot. So, yeah. you know, people look at it. What about We're, the tampering? That's the thing. I Because oh, you know it's obvious it's there, thing, yeah. Um, really upsets me. Yeah, for and, sure. And, uh, you know, they do it in ways that it's hard to get caught. They'll do it between players. Right. You know? so, ah, so for that's instance, tough. Yes. You, we'll lose and we'll shake hands in a huddle. Hey, man, <laughs> follow me in DM. Us. Well, I just yeah. sent four players That's out wild. to Colorado Springs for this national, yep. you know, yep. trying out for some national team mm-hmm. stuff, which is awesome, and they loved it. But one of the things I talked to them about is you are now building relationships around the country, and some people don't work the way we work. So, right, everybody so got the same integrity. Might, so I had to explain what tampering, and, you know, I don't know if you guys know, know Nora Sis. Yeah. She's like yeah. the sweetest person in the whole world, and she's like, Coach, people do that. <laughs> you know, like, yes, Nora, they yes. do that. Naive a little bit. And they will want you. So yeah, we, yes. need to, we need to talk about these things. So, you know, tampering is an issue um, on the Ill- on the you know NCAA violation side. But NIL is the biggest challenge for right sure. Now. Sure, that, I think that's you know potentially the demise of college athletics. I hope not, but yeah. we've got to figure out. I mean, it's the, the model right now is not <sighs> sustainable. So. NIL, um, it seems, or just from my conversations uh, with representatives of Creighton University, Creighton's not really into the aggressiveness of NIL. Um, do you think that um, with the culture that you have now, that at some point you have to be more aggressive in NIL to uh, build that? In terms rep- of collectives? Yeah, in terms of collectives, to build that reputation as not just a sustainable, great program, but also uh, opportunity from the NIL standpoint? Or do you feel like that's just not our thing and we'll try and negotiate, but we're going to stick to this integrity? Uh, well, I don't see it as an integrity issue because it's within the guise of the rules. Sure. So, um, Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that, right, right. That's a bar. That one should go online. Okay. Like, yeah, if we yeah, cutting yeah. clips, yeah, 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 what yeah, you yeah. said, I like that. Yeah. So we actually leaned into it a lot. Uh, Creighton Volleyball and Creighton Men's Basketball have collectives. Yep. So we um, – Actually, competitively throughout the country, we are Great. we are in that top group. We have some amazing donors who yeah. are, are funding it. Want to see us win? But I still go back to: is it sustainable for the long term? Mm. You know, so is you know these are donors that you know resources are finite, yeah, right? right? So instead of maybe giving to the program, they're right. giving to NIL and and we need it because this is for how sure. we can sustain and, mm. and keep these top kids. And yeah. have we? Uh, I think, you know, we've built our culture on really high quality young women. Um, But I think what we're going to see more and more, and hopefully still high quality young women, but if you, you know, if you're given a large life 
changing sum of money you can't right. you can't knock the kid yeah, when it's can, within yeah. the guise of the rules that i can do it and i i'm i'm selecting two great schools but this school's gonna give me x and set me uh, up for life right mm-hmm. can you knock the kid yeah, yeah. that's respect yeah, you know yeah. no one no one feels sorry for nick saban i mean he's won a bunch of championships and no he was zero a, people he was at a place in alabama where they could do almost anything but he said my th- earlier this week that there was a time where you came to alabama because you knew that we were going to make you better and get you to the, to the NFL, next level, right? Yep. Now you come, hey, am I going to play right away? Do I need to worry about transferring? And how much are you going to pay me? And that may be under the guise of the rules, but mm-hmm. that's not how you built championships over the years. True. And so that man at 72 steps away and goes, I don't know how to build now. Right. It's the young people who can figure that out. Yeah. You know? I kind of felt like Jay Wright uh, at Villanova for basketball was the same. Yeah. I felt like he walked away from the game at a point where – it became like too competitive with the new rules with NIL and things like that. It's tough, so man. it's tough. But I like how like the conversation that you're giving is like, hey, we understand that culture is changing and we're um you know, we're 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 competing with it, you know? Like you're you're aggressive with it and you have a high expectation. So I mean, that's good to hear just because like I feel like people will come to Omaha and they're always blown away and surprised, like about when they're actually here. Oh, yeah. You know? I didn't expect minus, the city to look like this. Yeah, <laughs> minus... Exactly cornfield. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, that's Lincoln, yeah, you know? Yeah. Hey, but, I'm from Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, yeah. like, it's great to hear you say that. The reason why is because I, I just, honestly and respectfully, I cannot not, not think about the Huskers. Mm-hmm. And I feel like in order for Creighton to get to that level, it has to be some conversation of NIL in that aspect. More of it. Yeah, yeah especially yeah. to get right back to that game. Yeah. yeah. So yep. one of the things I like, you always talk about the, you know, the, uh, the power of positive coaching, right? Um, you're tough. I know that. But at the same time, it seems like talking to your players, you're fair. Uh, you're going to tell them where they fit. Can you kind of discuss <laughs> that? attitude of coaching how did you develop it is it what how they coached you when you were coming up or how'd you get to that point yeah I think it, I, I evolved there and I what I did when I was a younger coach is tried to be who I'd seen which mm. was you know yelling yeah you know, that, that's the way most people were trained to coach and, right you know if I talk to my early players they'll say yeah when you, you got soft when they'd say, oh. no, they'd say <laughs> no they'd say when you yelled we laughed at you because oh. it was so, that's not the way I communicate yeah right? so you know I think like any position you guys yeah. have evolved on you know doing this right. job yeah, right yeah, yeah. you you look back so what I learned was you can still have accountability but you can talk to him in this tone and that's why it. I said you were mystique because I felt like you were just so like it's like I was listening in and waiting to hear you talk, but you were coaching, doing a hell of a job coaching. And so it makes sense to me that, we like, expect Nate, sometimes for you just to yell. Yeah. Well, right? every once in a while I do. <laughs> no, yeah. I do. I know uh, yeah, when yeah, I yeah. do, it's going to have it's, it's purpose is, yeah. But mm. I think I really, and I believe this in the workplace, I believe this everywhere. If you can get, you know, and I'm not saying this always happens, but my ultimate goal as a coach is that they are, that they want it so bad, that they yeah. love it so much. You don't got to coach, yeah. That they, they're going to do it. So if, if they're, if they're, what a philosophy. If they're doing poorly in a drill, I don't need to lose my, crap on them right i can say are we performing at the level to get to a final four ladies and they can i'm gonna take some notes not not always but if you have the right athletes and then you know i've also learned like if a kid has a bad attitude for a day that's that's not accepted in our gym and i don't approach them in anger i i I approach them in love you know like what's going on right this ain't you yeah right so instead of all of a sudden just yelling at them more i'm Trying to find out, and, and they, well, I failed a test today. Or no doubt, yeah, life is happening. Yeah, this, or I didn't get sleep, or I don't know. Okay, yeah. well, if you don't know, you got to turn it around because this isn't mm-hmm. the this isn't the way that we practice. It's funny. I was going to ask you about that because I was uh, I did an interview with Katie Tarman, the coach over oh, at great. Papio South, yep. and she was talking about back when she was in college that she had a bad attitude when she got benched, and it's like this is what twenty years later, mm-hmm. and she still regrets it. How do you tell a young person, hey? This is a really important moment right now in your life, and you're going to be thinking about this for years yeah. when you have to bench them or sit them down. How mm. do you do that? Well, I've had some players that have come back and apologized. And they've handled uh, yeah. things that they, the way they, What we try to do is handle all those scenarios preemptively. So even mm. right now, we have a weekly meeting uh, every Thursday in the spring, and, okay. and those are things that we'll talk about. So we'll go through a lot of scenarios. You just got benched. Josh, mm-hmm. you just got benched. How are you going to handle it? Uh, and so I think it makes stuff. their head go through yeah. it. And so then they... Mm. 
you know, I, I don't know whether you guys do. You dream about different things. These think, Thursdays with teams. It? These are team. Yeah, uh, team meetings. Okay, I'm following so, you. Yeah. So we do a lot of different things within that meeting, but we try to go through all those different scenarios so mm-hmm. that th- so each kid. I want I want Nora Sis. I want Kendra Wait mm. to imagine if they get benched, how are they going to handle it? So because I think a lot of times those starters, yeah, never, I'm not going to get benched, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And if they got benched, they would handle it great. I mean, I just know the personality right. of those kids. Mm-hmm. They would go to the bench and they would cheer them on yeah. and, and be great teammates. So that's one thing that we do, but I'm not, it's not perfect. No. You know, each kid. Right. Um, and then the other thing that I've learned over the years, which I did not do well as a young coach is you can't communicate enough. So if a kid's not hitting the expectations hmm. or, or if you're going to make a change, so anytime we pull a kid, that's not a, mm-hmm. like within just a rotation, right. um, a coach has to talk to him. Like that's just a policy. Regardless. That we have. And the kid may be like, I know why I got pulled. But, mm-hmm. And so it might be a quick combo, right. mm-hmm. but I, I want them to be connected because what I learned over the years is things that I thought were obvious. Kids yeah. would be like, you never told me why this happened. Man. And we and ever. I mean, I say this, like I'm great at it every year. Some kid will be like, you didn't communicate this. Yeah. And I'm like, dang it. You know, so mm-hmm. you can't. Oh, and sometimes I communicate and they're like, no kidding. And I'll be yeah. like, well, I'm just trying to make, trying sure. To make sure. But <laughs> irregardless, you communicate. Right. Yeah. yeah, man, you are gospel. Like, the things that mm-hmm. you're saying, like, I'm soaking it in just because I feel like I'm starting to get interested in coaching because my son is getting older. Mm-hmm. And, um, like, the older he gets, like, I'm taking little things from you as far as, especially the passion part. It's like, I don't even have to be uh, Bobby Knight. No, so, sure not. No, so to speak, no, no one if he, he won't have a job. No one, not yeah, anymore. <laughs> not twenty twenty four. Like no, no. if he, if they love it, <laughs> yeah. they can uh, elevate yeah. their play. Yeah. yeah. So I like that. Yeah. I got a question though. Um, with all this being said, um, the supernovas are now here. Um, I believe it's going to be sustained just because of the model of franchises being owned by different owners. Mm-hmm. Same thing as the NBA, MLB, all the different sports. How has that helped Creighton with recruiting? And how do you um, see that as a positive now for players that come through your program? Well, it's, it's amazing. And I, I, I'm assuming you know we have another professional league that's going to be arriving next year. I know now. Know no. Yes. Where, where, where? Where? Love Volleyball is coming. They're going to have six franchises. And Omaha and Atlanta are the two that are going to have a – that are Love have volleyball. Voting. Wow. Okay. So uh, you know, I I don't. Oh, know that's realistic awesome. That both are going to make it. To but I get told by a lot of people that I mean, the NFL and I think the NBA started yeah. with two leagues. They did. They ABA, merged, NBA. They yeah. merged. Right. So They'll merge. That's what yeah. we're hoping. We're yeah. saying it here. NFL. They're going to merge. Yeah. 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 Sure. Or some or, or one of them wins. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. And it has to. A couple teams but to bring them. Yeah. Is that our like our athletes have had to make the choice of if I want to continue to play. I have to go to, to Europe Overseas, or Asia right. or someplace. Right. And that's wonderful for some athletes. Jay, yeah. Were you around with Jaylee Winters? Yeah, I was. She, okay, so yeah. Jaylee's still playing. <coughs> yeah, I follow her on Instagram. She's incredible, yeah. She's going to the Love League here Oh, really? Oh, good for her. Awesome. Um, she's awesome. So she's been, and she loves Europe. I, I wouldn't be surprised if she lands in Europe. Right. Term. But that's not every kid. I yeah, couldn't yeah. go overseas. Yeah. Yeah. This is just me. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, looking back, I'm like, Man, what if I didn't get that league opportunity here? Could I see myself playing years abroad? I don't think I could just because of I'm a family guy. Yeah, family, yeah, it'd be tough. Uh, you know, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. now you know? these little girls that have never been able to dream about it Dang. get to dream about yeah. being a professional volleyball player here right. in the United States. And, and it's happening now. Like my players that three years ago said – I'm going to be done after undergrad. And they were good, saying, huh? saying, I want to play. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like current players right now yeah. that we're yeah. going to be done, yeah. and which is yeah. really exciting. It's like WNBA. I mean, yeah, yeah, maybe you don't know as much, and um, we're not going to spend this time trying to dive into that new league, but is that um, a thing that's like one owner, a lot of teams, or is it a franchise thing? It is one owner at this point. Okay. Um, it's, it's a different model. It's a European model. Gotcha. They uh, have purchased club volleyball. So Premier Volleyball yep. here yep. in Omaha has been purchased by them. Yep. And uh, they're not taking their funds from the nope. club, but that's their fan base. Right. Okay, so that's what they do a lot of these European teams. So, <coughs> and then the plan is actually, I think, in, in a certain amount of time, they will then franchise them out. In oh, the okay. Short term. Exciting. In mm. the... The interesting thing with the love model is that they've signed a lot of the Olympians. Wow. So oh, okay. a lot of those players that are going to be playing in Paris yeah. and a lot of the Tokyo players that won the gold medal yeah. are um, 
already signed a This is the best volleyball so. in the world. So we'll know, we'll know their names Justine at the Olympics. Justine Long, for yep. instance, from, oh, okay. is yeah. going to be on the right. team here in Omaha. Wow. Year, oh, wow. So. That's awesome. So, yeah. So, it'll. I don't know which one's going to make I it. I know. And I just, I mean, you, gosh, you're, I hope one of them yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. I, guess, yeah. I like your perspective. Mm -hmm. You're cheering for the opportunity for the collegiate 100%. level players. Yeah. Unbiased, yep. doing whatever you can to get the players in the best position. Yeah. I'm excited about it now just for the fact that I felt like there was never enough or a opportunity for volleyball. Yeah. Yeah, and volleyball, like, I know, I, out of nowhere, it was like a stat of it coming on the rise, the third most watched sport. But I've always watched volleyball on TV, mm -hmm. Creighton Volleyball, Nebraska, just volleyball in general. And well, I think what I like the most about it is the elite teams like a Creighton, you know, Stanford, where it's back and forth before someone gets a set point. That's yeah. real elite volleyball. Yeah. There's you know? some really unique things with volleyball. First, that uh, it's one of the few sports that the women have more viewership than the men. Yeah. Right? Uh, right. Um, we've, as a sport, had to stand on our own. Yep. And what mm. I mean by that is there's not a Title IX push to make volleyball. Wow. And, mm. and you're right. We are the number one youth volleyball. Volleyball is the number one girls' sport in the country right, right yep. now. Mm. Um, viewership, yep. Big Ten has leaned into it. I know it has it surpassed. I think wrestling this yep. year. It's it was behind football and men's basketball. It was. Mm -hmm. It was in front of women's basketball. So yep. I think those of us that are you know obviously promoting the sport that we love are yeah. saying, hey, we're doing this on our own. So imagine if you give us the run. So like the uh, NCAA tournament wasn't on linear television until I think. I, I think the second weekend. Mm -hmm. Well, women's basketball is on linear all the way through. All the way on through. ABC early. Yeah. Our final was on ABC. Right. Um, and, you know, we're saying, like, do these stories. Yeah. You know, give us the runway. And right. we think we can do some amazing things. No doubt about it. We're wrapping it up. Three things that I learned from Coach. One, you can smile with your eyes. Yep. We learned that during COVID. Remember? You told me how to do that. The other one is get your sleep. You know, gotta get your sleep. You're an you athlete. Have a good memory. Yeah, and oh, psychopedia. If you, if you do well, you gotta get some ice cream. Yeah, he did so this, this is, just for you this guys. This is the Sunday. This oh is yours. Gosh. This is his. This is the Sunday they have over here yep. at the Let It Fly Sports Bar: <laughs> chocolate and vanilla with chocolate sauce and a cherry on top. That looks. We got amazing. a spoon for you. I don't feel like I want to eat it in front of people. No, no, right no, now. no. You can eat it after the second. Okay, good. Yeah. I will eat but it. But he though. got one for himself and one for I you. I got one for yeah. you and I got one yeah. for the coach. That's what I did. Yeah. Um, we appreciate you taking the time. You know I love having conversations with you. Congratulations to your daughter and everything that she accomplished as well. For sure. Um, I was watching. That's awesome. That I'm, that's just incredible to win like that. Yeah. Not a lot. I mean, that's a 1% of 1%. It's to legendary, To man. win that kind of championship. So, yeah. yeah. Thanks yeah. a lot, Coach. Hey, Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate you having me on. All right. Welcome back. We appreciate Coach Booth for coming on. She keep it real, man. She's she's so good and, and you know what she did and we all should do this as she's gotten older and more experienced in the business she's added all these things to her toolbox right she yeah. mentioned it when she was younger she did certain things certain ways and then she well that didn't work out so she added something yeah. some coaches don't want to evolve yeah I, since i've known her she's evolved oh, multiple times look bro um she don't even understand for me just as a young Man, young coach, I know the game. I'm passionate about the game. I know how it's supposed to look. But the way she said that she don't even have to yell because mm -hmm. of the expectation of the players, like, and their goals, I yeah. took that gym from her. I think the point she made I where she said there's a time when you go talk to that student athlete and, you know, maybe they had a bad class. Maybe they broke up with the – No doubt. Give another, whatever. Or maybe they just don't know. Right. And what did they say? Well, you need to figure it out. Yeah. You know, that's, it's true. You, you, no Damon doubt. always would say, and I've heard coaches say this, the last thing I want to hear you say is, oh, I know. I don't want to hear. No, I, maybe you do. Yeah. Maybe you do. Right. But you, need to, you did it wrong. Right. So you need to listen to somebody else. She was giving right. good Yeah, she was advice. doing a very good job. Very, very good job. I'm, yeah. I'm, I promise you I'm going to use some of her yeah. gems. Yeah. <laughs> you my all, son going to be like, Dad, you ain't mad? You also don't want kids <laughs> saying my fault. I know it was that, your fault. That was me. I saw it my on first the field in the court. Oh, my bad, my bad, I coach. My bad, I, no, coach. No, no, my fault, my no, fault. I don't, don't, don't tell me my bad or my yeah. fault. I know it was. Yeah, but that habit. <laughs> Let's from, get that fixed the, up. The habit for me uh, came from, <laughs> like, the the short leash, short leash and high expectation coming into college. Yeah. You know, for me, it was like, oh, man, this is fast. I got all these plays and the, the guys are just as talented as I was or better mm -hmm. just coming out of high school. My bad, coach. I didn't mean, like, I was yeah. big on, I didn't mean to mess up what, sure, what no, y'all trying to do. Yep, yep. You know? 
But uh, I mean, shit. That's why. I mean, that's why I red shirted. That's fine. That's fine. No problem with that. Yeah. Hey, we want to we want to thank Coach Kirsten Bernthal Booth for coming on with us. That yeah, was awesome, thank you, Coach. Um, next week on the show, if everything uh-huh. goes like plans, we're going to preview the Jet Award Gala, which is April fourth. Johnny the Jet Rogers will be on the show, and yeah. Danny Woodhead, right, former NFL running back, two time Harlan Hill winner in the lower level of uh, at Shadron State. Supposedly he'll join us as well. He's the keynote speaker for right. the event. So that'll be a good episode next week. Do the people understand that you're the executive director of that? If they don't, I'm just putting it out there, man. I, I because am the executive director. You super, you, I mean, you fit the criteria of that. Like, you you know everything about football. You're super passionate about football. You, It's not even about the Huskers. It's just you know sports and the way you represent, you know, and just covering sports for all the years you have. Who better? The Michael Severe. Yeah, uh, it wasn't my choice. I got picked. Um, exactly. Let's do, let's do exactly. That's my point. <laughs> uh, so, so hopefully we'll have them on next week. That'll be yeah. awesome to talk to them about the event. And, I wanna, and Danny's got the great story. Yeah. You're talking about a kid who is one of the greatest soccer players in the history of the state, was one of the best high school football players in the history of the state. And for whatever reason, whether it was Bill Callahan or Frank yeah. Solich, he didn't end up having a chance to play at Nebraska. Had to go prove himself. And he just prove himself. Man. He was academic All-American, two-time Harlan Hill yeah. Award winner, which is the Heisman for the lower levels. He did all of that. Yeah. Then he gets to the NFL, and they're like, oh, you're too – we're going to cut you. And right. then he gets a break. Yep. All of a sudden, he's playing for the Patriots. Yep. He's playing for the chart. I mean, he's got a great story. He's got a great story. Um, we want to thank Coach Booth, as I mentioned. Also, King Val Elvis – on the wheels of steel. Holding it down. Appreciate you, bro. Mac Pittman was here as well. He's going to be doing the editing, getting everything put together. No Meg this week. No social media. We had to take our own pictures. Oh, man. I mean, we had to take our own pictures. And also our executive producer, who was a little under the weather. He <laughs> wasn't feeling good. <laughs> crazy. So, you know, Phil McClain, he's at home. He's yeah. taking a little nap. He'll be, he'll be fine. Phil he'll funny. be okay. <laughs> uh, and also, of course, thanks to our presenting sponsor, Bud Light. Whether you're hanging out here inside the Let It Fly Sports Bar or you're at home, wherever you are, remember, easy drinking and easy buckets from Bud Light throughout Nebraska. Easy to drink and easy to enjoy. Our sponsor, we appreciate them. Take us away, Josh. Hey, Josh Jones here with my man Michael Severe. You know how we do it. It's a Let It Fly show.